welcome to our channel in the last session we discussed how to create a thread by extending thread class and by implementing runnable interface step by step procedure now in this session we will discuss one more example of creating the threads by implementing runnable interface now in this example i will create uh, suppose i will create three threads assume my first thread name is sample 1 second thread name is sample 2 third thread name is sample 3 so here each one is called a task what is the aim here one runnable interface is there which consists of run method this run method is implemented here. Run method is implemented here. Run method is implemented here. Now go to create one project, new project, Java project. Assume the project name is multi threading 2. This is my project name under this project first to create one package the package name is a pack one within this package create three classes first two class name is sample one like this what is the procedure first to create sample one create another one sample to create another class sample 3 like this i will create i had created three classes within this one what is the procedure you already know the procedure implements runnable implements runnable within this one you need to provide the definition public wide runoff wide runoff so just to print one for loop for int i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus now just to system dot out dot print ln Print the value of i. Print the value of i. Semicolon. Now, if you want to display the result with some time, thread dot sleep off. So, sleep method is used for waiting this particular amount of time temporarily. Catch exception sum e e dot print stack trace or else you can print the message print stack trace of okay here like this you can create multiple threads like this you can create multiple threads here within the for loop instead of printing i value you can print the name of the thread. For example, I will print some message. Sample 1 process. Sample 1 process with some message. Now, now thread class consists of, remember, the thread class consists of one method. Current thread of. So, this current thread method returns the current executing thread object. Current executing thread object. If you want to display the name on this particular object, you have one method get name of. Get name of is the method which is used to display the name of the thread. So, here you can write like this thread dot 
current thread of dot get name of simply it displays the name of the thread displays the name of the thread okay now in the similar fashion create another thread already sample to class is written so sample to here instead of sample one use the name as sample to save now sample three use the name as sample three use the name as sample three fine like this three threads are created now create another package new package pack to within this package create one class demo thread one demo thread one Okay, whatever it is, remote thread one one, not a problem. Import pack one dot star. Okay, and uh, you know the procedure. What is the procedure? Simply first to create an object for the class a sample one, some ob one is equal to new sample one of now sample two ob2 is equal to new sample two of sample three ob3 is equal to new sample three of observe i created an object after that thread t1 is equal to new thread of new thread of ob1 you got the procedure that is sample one is converted into thread object t1 now thread t2 is equal to new thread of ob2 here new thread of ob3 T3. Finally, next one. T1 dot start of. T2 dot start of. T3 dot start of. Okay. Like this, I will I have started all the three tests. Save and run this program. Observe. Okay, we have some error import pack one dot star semicolon small error execute now in this program three threads are created observe the output sample one three two order is not at all important order is not at all important at a time three threads are executed in the next second three threads are executed internally what happened suppose one second is divided into three slots one second is divided into three slots that is the reason at a time three threads are executed again observe first three threads again three threads again three threads next two three threads three threads so current thread name is thread zero thread one thread 2 it will take like this sample 1 the first two thread is thread 0 here see this one thread 0 is sample 1 t2 that consider as thread 1 t3 that is considered as thread 2 so sorry it is confusing thread 0 thread 1 thread 2 so by using thread dot current thread we are getting the current thread object get name the names are 0 1 2 thread 0 thread 1 thread 2 or else we can set the name of the threads also for example 
t1.setName. So get name is used for retrieving setter and getter methods. T1 dot set name of Raju. T2 dot set name of Naga. So that means my first thread name is Raju. My second thread name is Naga. And suppose my thread name is suppose Vikas. Save, run the program. See, you observe, instead of thread 0, thread 1, thread 2, the names are displayed at a time. Again, I said one point, in the same second, all the three threads are executed. For that understanding, if you want to display the time, now show. I will show you. I will display the time also. I will display the time also after get name plus uh, I will write down the statement time colon display the time where the time is available the time is available under date under util package so you need to create an object for the util package Instead of creating object and use this object here, you can directly use create an object new. I will write down here new space java dot util dot date of it displays the complete information save. In the sample to class also. Plus. Time colon. Plus. New. Java dot. Util dot. Date of. New. Java dot. Util dot date of here yeah, okay plus plus save coming to sample 3 here also do the same thing create an object without any name that is the point only util dot data for else create an object use this method now Coming to this one, execute and observe the output carefully. First, sample one process, Raju, time, Thursday, month, sorry, day two, month, year, and observe 8-21-44, 8-21-44, 8 In the same second, all the three threads are executed. In the same three seconds, at the second 44, all the three threads are executed. Again, the second time, the same three seconds, same second, same second. Now you understand the point. So, multiple threads are executed simultaneously in the sense it will take the same time. It will take the same time internally. How these threads are executed, remember, we know one point. So, I will explain generally. Up to now, we know main stack. So, first what happened? Main program is loaded. Whenever the main program is loaded, first we are creating an object for sample 1. Yes or no? An object for sample 1. Sample 1 OB is equal to. See this one? Sample 1 OB is equal to new sample 1 of an object is created. Think you know the internal procedure. Assume the address is this one. Inside sample 1 we have run method. Similarly, along with the sample 1 sample 
2 is also created. Assume this address is this one. Now, sample 3 is also created. Assume this address is this one. Here, run method is there. Here also run method. After that, what happened? Thread objects are created. Assume this is the memory for thread object. So, thread T1 is equal to new thread. For example, this memory is this one. This is thread T2. This is the memory. This is thread T3. This is the memory. Inside the thread, what is available? A thread can hold reference OB1. So, the address of sample 1 is available 0x11. Inside thread 2, 0x22. Inside thread 3, 0x33. Along with each and every thread consists of start method. Each and every thread consists of start method. Here also start method. Here also start method. So, what is the first step? First to main is loaded. Whenever the main is loaded, all object creations, memory allocations, all are happened. The first step after that, T1 dot start. Whenever you are calling the start method, that is you are calling this one. Internally, what it calls? The start method calls the run method. The start method calls the run method. Yes or no? Remember, each and every thread have a separate stack. This is thread stack 1. Suppose this is the thread stack for T1, thread stack for T2, thread stack for T3. Now, whenever you are calling the start method, so some memory is allocated inside the main. Now, this run method is loaded into the stack. So, within this one, that run method is executed. After that, you are calling t2.start. It internally calls the run method. This is loaded here. Whenever you are calling, this will call. This is loaded here. Each thread have a separate stack is available. Suppose start method t1 dot start, t2 dot start, t3 dot start. Once the run method is completed, this frame is destroyed. This is completed, this is destroyed. This is completed, this is destroyed. Internally, it maintains program counter register. Why? Switching among the threads. Switching among the threads, it maintains a program counter register also. This is the way how the multiple threads are executed and how do we create a thread by using runnable interface. Now, in the next session, we will discuss creating the threads by using anonymous inner classes. Thank you.